I wanted to do a quick video today looking again at the Electrum Sabercraft parent. Uh, this is Azzy. He has decided that he's going to be in this video, so he's just going to hang out over there and do his thing, apparently. Um, but uh, you may be asking yourself, well, haven't I reviewed the Electrum Sabercraft Errant before? And I have. Uh, but recently, a newer version has landed in my lap. The ones that I've reviewed were out of the first 50, the flagship run. Uh, I believe the original that I reviewed was 38. This one right here, I believe, is 28. This one has a uh, nice bit of etching on it from Ryan Heller. Uh, and a bit of a grip added over those copper accents. But uh, this one right here is actually what you'll get if you order them on their website right now. So I wanted to sort of look at the difference uh, and how, these, how they've changed things up since their original run. All right, so first let's look at the hilt design itself. Now the original had a lot of hard edges, especially right here, right above the grip. And uh, each one of these little, little ribs right here and up here. And the copper accents itself were, or themselves were actually a bit, uh, a bit, a bit rough. Uh, now none of these edges were anything that was going to damage your hand, but you could certainly feel them, and they were perhaps a little bit worrying. These up here are really the only dangerous bits, uh, the flanges. But um, they were, they were definitely hard edges. Now what that, or the reason for that is they had this tube that they had just sort of machined the ribs into. Now skip over to the design of the new ones. And those edges have actually been beveled off a whole lot more. This one, I got a part of the second cat in the shot there. Okay, uh, this one right here, this edge especially, where your hand is right above the grip, is a lot less dangerous on this. You don't even really feel that edge as anything that catches. They've beveled off this edge, they've beveled off the edges on the accents, and they've done a lot of beveling on these edges right here. It actually has more of a curved feel to it as opposed to an angular feel. So uh, they basically rounded the whole thing off, made it more fluid. Uh, that's really the only change in the hilt design. Otherwise, you can see these are roughly the same thing. They're still using that set screw on the pommel that holds it in place. Uh, still no guides. But um, let's take a look at some of the, or let me, uh, let me go over some of the other things that have changed. Now you'll notice that the boards, these things use a, I believe they call it a diadium board, uh, the chassis, still the same, two speakers, still the same, uh, access to the micro SD card right here, still the same, um, kill switch and uh, recharge port, all the same there. Uh, the boards have the same functionality as well. These things hold eight sound phones. They're very similar to uh, the, or the uh, Plexter Prism or... Uh, Crystal Shard board, uh, except they are a little, they hold a few more sound phones, but uh, the format of them is pretty much exactly the same. Um, the only things about functionality that they've worked out. So this one, the old ones, had a tendency, if the battery went all the way dead, when you plugged it in and booted it back up, uh, a lot of times, and this happened with both of my old ones, they would not load the sound font correctly. They'd go to a buzzing sound that would just keep going until you were able to cycle through the sound fonts and choose another font. Okay, they've worked that feature out in these new ones. This new one has never done that to me. Uh, the other bits, um, so they've kind of worked out the bugs a little bit. Um, the other thing about them is the touchpad. Now, this one's touchpad was very sensitive. I'll go ahead and turn this on real quick. We still have the backlit for the uh, for the touchpad. Okay, they offer those in different colors, and we still scroll up and scroll down. Uh, on this one, the touchpad is very sensitive, though. And if your hands have oil on them or they're a little bit warm, and you touch one of these uh, those little these little sensors right here, uh, sometimes it'll stick. So that perhaps say you're cycling through uh, sound fonts or something like that. Uh, it'll just keep cycling after you hit the button and won't stop. Now, that will still happen with these, or with the new ones, but less so. So it seems that they've made the touchpad perhaps a little bit less sensitive. Uh, go ahead and fire this one. Okay. A little bit more, or a little bit less sensitive, a little bit more user-friendly on the touchpad. Uh, and the only other thing is... These had a tendency to get, I believe, a little bit hotter with, uh, with use. The LED is sitting right here, and especially with blend colors, uh, like whites or pinks uh, or off-whites, 
Uh, with a little bit of use, you really start to feel the heat be or build up right here. Okay, with the newer ones, that doesn't seem to be as much of the case. I don't know if that's because they're using a different metal, they've got a different heat sink, uh, there's less power, I'm not sure why, but this one seems to build up heat a lot less than the, uh, than the original version. So, by and large, it's still a very similar saver with some subtle differences. If you find one, uh, that's one way to tell whether or not you're dealing with one of the originals or whether you're dealing with one of the news. Look at the edges. Uh, otherwise, though, still a very solid saver, one of my favorites. Hopefully this has been of use to you and you've enjoyed meeting one of the cats you've seen in the background uh, every so often. If you have, please subscribe and join me back for more.